Is it possible to call up every false teacher or wolf and to warn him personally before going public? Hello, Jonathan Ferguson. No, no, sorry. I, listen, I can't call you possible, but listen, this is Corey Miner. I just want to talk to you about something. Yeah, I want to let you know that your teaching is false and heretical. You got a moment? Hello? Hello? Hello, is this Marcus Rogers? Yeah, this is Corey Miner. Hello? No, that's not possible or practical. One common criticism that's often put out uh, for anyone who calls out a false preacher, a false teacher, false prophet, false, false apostle, false anything, anyone that's espousing heresy, a wolf, is that should we make an effort to contact this person privately first before making a public rebuke or warning? Because of the sure volume, the sure number of these people who are on the rise, that just is not practical. That's impossible. And that just assumes that if you try to contact them, that they will hear. Now, full disclosure, I tried to contact a Marcus Rogers and some other people in the past. However, they're not very interested in hearing you tell them why their doctrine is wrong, because oftentimes they don't have the theological heft to defend their doctrinal stance. And that's not their point. That's not their purpose. And after trying to make a doctrinal claim, they're out for their own glory. So let's be clear. We're not talking about calling out someone for a simple doctrinal issue. Number one, all doctrine is fair game. If a person who is a brother who I may love, but I may disagree with on a doctrine, I can or you can or anyone else can make a statement or a point about why they disagree with that doctrinal stance. Because we're not talking about an issue of salvation, uh, though it may relate to salvation, but we're not talking about a primary issue, an issue that is key and essential to the doctrine. It's how we do so that often matters, but still, all doctrine is fair game. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about an actual wolf, someone who is promoting outright heresy. So I haven't said so really lately, but Marcus Rogers, in case you're listening, you are still a heretic. Jonathan Ferguson, Amanda Ferguson, your wife, you both are still heretics. It's 15 angels to weaponize 15 people. Oh, these are big angels. Let me, one, two, three, come on. David Taylor, you are certainly a heretic, a false teacher. It's time that you quit being a petty, stupid, Dumb, dead, lifeless, a McDonald, hell Christian. Now, y'all know I'm a true spiritual father. There's a lot of correction that goes on around here. I rule here. I'm king here. And I say this holy. You all need to submit to who has the answer. And Jesus gave it to me personally. All of you pastors who talk about me, you are punks. Jesse Duplantis, can't forget you. You are one of the leaders. I mean, you want to know what God looks like. Hold your hand up. Come on. Look. I have his ability. I'm a created being. His name is in me, not on me. Like I said, like in me. Do you understand it? Angels recognize who I am. Devils recognize who I am. And to the Daniel Adams, the Benny Hens, the Todd Whites, the Creflo Dollars, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. We have a duty to call out wolves. Now, lest we forget, Jesus also told us about these wolves. Beware of false prophets who will come in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased or bad tree bears bad fruit. So he says, beware of these false prophets who are what? Ravenous wolves inwardly, but they look like sheep because wolves like to hang out around sheep. They have acquired a taste for sheep. They've recognized that they can pilch and pilfer and destroy them by simply befriending them, by simply looking like them. And so oftentimes you'll see these wolves look just like sheep, act like sheep, behave like sheep, move like sheep, but inwardly they are what, according to Jesus? 
ravenous wolves, and we can know them by the fruit, by their actions. Again, it's not a one-time issue, um, a false teaching, uh, a bad doctrinal belief here or there. Everyone is going to have something that they believe that's going to be wrong. All false teachings does not make you a false teacher, but a false teacher is someone who habitually um, espouses these heresies, these egregiously wrong doctrines that promote themselves, that are only for the glory of themselves and not for the body's growth. We're also told in Acts 20, 28, it says, pay careful attention to yourselves and to the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, look what he says, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. So he says, people among you, wolves that are among you will arise. These false prophets, these teachers, they will arise from among you. And, they are, and they're not trying to spare the flock. They don't have any care concern for you, but it's more for them. And so we are to, one, be on alert, but to warn people about them. Paul puts it this way. In 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, 13, he says, For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Notice the word apostles. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. And so our job, first and foremost, isn't to tear them down, to bring them down. What we cannot do, and let me just be clear, uh, we're not going to be the ones that's going to bring down uh, any wolf, any false teacher, any false apostle, false prophet, what have you. That's not our job. Our job is to uh, expose them, as Paul says in Ephesians, and to warn the body. God will bring them down and he will do so according to their own deeds. And so when we call someone out, the decision whether to be private or public, remember, Jesus did not actively go after these scribes and Pharisees, these, these bad leaders in his day. No, now he confronted them, especially when they encountered him. Oftentimes they would come to him and so he would deal with them but his focus was the sheep. Same thing with John. When John's baptizing, they come to him. He says to them, he confronts them, brood of vipers, what works of repentance, what fruits of repentance have you brought? In other words, can we tell, can we look and see by your deeds that you've changed? Show us, prove it to us. And so, as again, keeping in line with what he said, what Jesus said, that we'll know them by their fruits. And so it should be evident. With these people, it is evident. Lest we forget, remember Marcus Rogers? She started, and then it would like go down, and she would, like she was getting choked. I told the lady to look at me, and I told her what I felt like I was seeing in the spirit, and I said, God wants me to pull this snake out of your back. Remember Jonathan and Amanda Ferguson? Watch what God's gonna do in four minutes to replace four years. Remember Benny Hinn? Can I forget David Taylor? These are not my words. These are the Lord Jesus' words. Jesus has given a big sign that he is coming to physically eat with you. It's just not going to be in a dream. But he started it out last night in a dream. So now the issue is going to be if we're confronting someone, if we're warning someone, the issue has got to be, is this a believer? If it's a believer, then obviously their heart is different than the believer. They may say something and they may genuinely believe what it is they're saying. But if they are believe they have the Holy Spirit in them. And so over time, at some point in time, they will hopefully listen. But they're not trying to be intentionally deceptive, unlike an actual wolf who's trying to devour the body. And so, again, doctrine is fair game, depending upon how you 
approach the person. But if it's not a brother and this is harmful to the body, we need to one, ascertain, is this something that's growing? Meaning are more and more people being attracted to them and leading thereby leading people away from Christ to this destructive heresy that can harm them, not necessarily spiritually, because even Christians, Christians will not lose their salvation by being attracted to these people, but they can be attracted to them and it would cause a stagnation in their growth. Uh, there have been times where we've seen this bad doctrine lead to even physical harm, such as the person who was baptized and, and then subsequently drowned by Marcus Rogers and his heretical teaching. So now, could you imagine if you were a shepherd and you were leading sheep and you were going in the right direction and you're calling your sheep with you as you go, but you notice a wolf, you notice another wolf, you notice two wolves, three wolves. You turn back to where you're going, you keep walking in the right direction, and you keep calling your sheep to come with you, but you do nothing to warn them to let them know of any impending danger, nor do you stop and fend off or fight the wolf. Do you confront the danger? Would that be an example of a good shepherd? Or if the shepherd, while he's leading them, stops and fends off the wolves, confronts them, and also lets and alerts the other sheep of danger? Well, the second example is the more biblical example. To make this more fitting, imagine a friend of yours hearing about someone coming to do you harm. Maybe they're going to try to trick you out of some money, deceive you or what have you. They either and they do nothing to let you know about it, nor do they do anything to confront the other person. Is that the kind of friend that you would want? I would hope that a friend of mine would one. Uh, I would hope that they would even confront the person. But even if that at least warned me about that person and you have to warn someone about somebody by name or else how will they know what or who to be on alert for? Paul in 1 Corinthians 5, 11 says that, but now I'm writing you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual morality or greed or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard or swindler, swindler, no, not even to eat with such a one. Now look down at verse 13. God judges those outside. Purge the evil person from among you. So purge the evil person from among you, meaning that there are evil people amongst the body who seem and want to do the body harm. And who's going to deal with them? God is going to deal with them. And so you have to let people know who the person is, who the people are, and what's being taught. Otherwise, how would they know who and what to avoid? And so what we are supposed to do is we are to uh, focus on spreading the gospel, teaching the word of God. And in the course of our duties, in the course of our life, when we come across a false teacher, a wolf, we confront them if at all possible, but we don't go out of our way to confront them, leaving the sheep vulnerable. No, we will let the sheep know, we'll warn them of the dangers and let people know who the dangerous person or the dangerous wolf is. Amen.